Theme and Conversations. I am Vanessa Balbuena. This episode, we will be joined by two up-and-coming Cebuana singer-songwriters who last month both released new singles under Viva Records. Zairish Al-Kasib and Justine Narvios, welcome to the Theme and Conversations. Everyone, my name is Justine Arvias, and thank you so much for having me, Freeman. All right, so um, hi everyone. My name is Zaira Falcasid, and we are just so glad that you're here with us today. Zaira, Justine, tagaasa mo sa Cebu. Where are you from? Um, I'm from like in the Bilang, near. I, I'm not gonna say. <laughs> anyway, yeah. okay. how about you, Justine? Uh, I'm quite far from Zairish. I'm actually from Talisay, Cebu. So I'm at the I'm from the south. All right. Um, both of you are signed under Viva, right? You're both Viva artists, so you're lucky to have an established company in your career. But before all of that, I'd like to know: At what age did you discover that you had a knack for singing and then songwriting? Let's start with okay. Justine. All right. Okay. So um, I actually don't really know what age I I started singing. It's always just been something that I, I've loved to do since I was a kid. I grew up with a lot of music at home. My mom sings karaoke almost every weekend. Then my grandpa plays music in the car. So um, it's just something that I've, I've been doing for so many years. Although when I was 13, I took formal lessons. And then from there, I had um, stage performances. And I think that sort of built my um, confidence to performing on me, I started actually singing when I was four or five, and same thing with um, Justine. Like, perme like you know, my karaoke, so family occasions and all that. And there, um, I was exposed to music. And then at thirteen years old, that's when I discovered, or fifteen, that's when I discovered um, songwriting. But um, at what age did you uh, realize that this is music is something you'd like to seriously pursue as a career? Justine? Um, for me, I never really thought of it so much as a career. Um, my family just encourages me to do whatever I like and to make sure that um, to put like passion into what I do. So, um, it, like, I got, I was booked for gigs and all that. I just really wanted a stage to sing. So if there was a chance, if there was an opportunity to sing, sing, yeah, I grabbed it. If there's an audition, then I, I'd go for that audition. So girl, um, nowadays, I'm glad that I've been given the chance through Viva, you know, that this has become already somewhat like a, like a profession, like a career for me um, through Viva. So uh, they've given me opportunities to make vlogs, to make music. And I find that, um, for me, that's such a blessing. What would you say your genre is for Justine? Um, I love pop music. Um, I also like rock, R and B, hip hop. Um, but when in terms of singing, I've uh, recently re- oh, my 1950s. I find them to be really cool and snazzy. So yeah. Zayish, okay. naman this time. When did you realize that you're going to pursue music seriously as a career? Um, same thing with Justine, actually, like, uh, this is, um, like, it's more of, like, a, a passion inside of me. It's more of, like, you, I, I just love singing. I just love um, creating music. It's more of, like, that. But um, this music career, um, I'm just so happy, grateful, and blessed to, like, be, in, be part of this um like having this label and all that, but this is not basically um, a career a career path or anything like that, but we don't know where God will take us, <laughs> but it's more of like, um, it's just something that it opened an opportunity for, opened um, in front of me, and I'm just like glad to again, be part of this. And yeah, and also we, I just wanted to thank Viva Records also to um, being there, taking care of us. And yeah, that's just, we just, we are just so grateful. That's all I can say. Thank you. <laughs> Justine here just discovered now that she loves the um, blues genre. How about you, Zairish? What would you say your genre as a singer and songwriter is? Um, for me, I'm more on... Um, acoustic music like I'm more into mellow parang sweet tapos uh, yung parang 
masakit, ganyan. It's more of like OPM, ganyan. They say writing can be therapeutic and even healing. Um, for you, Zyrish and Justine, what does writing songs do to you personally? Uh, for me, uh, I as what I shared a while ago, um, I started writing, I discovered writing when I was 13 or 15 years old. And that's when I learned na parang I can express my emotions through it. And kasi when I was young, I'm very, I'm a very shy child i'm a very shy and then i i don't know how to express my emotions and from there like when i write songs i can truly um express my feelings even though it's more of like indirect in a way because i don't you i don't also want to um share my vulnerable part but now i i learned to be more one of the things that i am working on and it's more of like a confession How about you, Justin? I actually really agree with Zairish you know, that this is somewhat a form of expression. It's a form uh, for you to come out of your comfort zone if you're a shy type of kid. Um, for me, po, I, I don't think I'm a shy kid. I've always been very expressive. But what songwriting does for me, especially during this pandemic, is it's a form of a creative outlet for me. So it's a way for me to relieve stress. Um, to just pour into what I create, what I'm thinking of. Um, when I'm tired from schoolwork, I'm actually really excited and practice at home. So I think um, it's a great hobby for those who are stuck at home and um, wanting to try something new. For Zayish, since you mentioned that you were a shy kid, um, doesn't it uh, scare you to make yourself vulnerable when you're confessing your feelings to the world through your song? It is. Um, sometimes it's so hard to put a word like yung parang sobrang personal nito, and I was like, ah, so someone will hear the the experience and all that, and it's it is really hard. And I really um appreciate um songwriters. I really appreciate that is so vulnerable with their feelings, and it it is really uncomfortable. But it's but that's when uncomfortable will actually result to inspiration. Like, it can also inspire other people. And that's basically, for me, a beauty uh, when, a beauty in, yeah. What is your song process, songwriting process like? And what usually inspires you? Oh, um, for me, it's more of like, when I am at the moment, like, for an example, right now, I'm happy. I'm happy to be with you guys. And I can write. I can use this happiness for me to create a story. So that's basically where I, I get my inspiration. And and it's not it's not usually, I know, parang, um, I'm really at that moment. Like, for example, um, I'm making a song, like a heartbreak song. But I'm really, like, I'm just... <laughs> hurt i'm just in pain and all that so i i just can um t- take advantage on that emotion and create a concept something like that okay how about you justin what usually inspires you and what's your songwriting process like um i think i sort of agree with jayish na no when you're in the moment you have to make sure to soak in everything that you feel and you can be able to put it into a song in my case if i'm gonna get technical i don't Uh, play any instruments so it's quite hard for me to come up with like a demo first um, and then the lyrics uh, but I'm one of the people that it's really easy for me to come up with lyrics so if I have a tune in my head I can easily fit that into lyrics or um, uh, I find it easy for me to express what I feel uh, into words more than actually like uh, making the instrumental because I, as, as I mentioned I don't play any instruments but um, I think that stems from me always uh i appreciated poems since i was a kid i like writing poems short stories stuff like that so i think it helps the song you released from april is titled asa but this was written by someone else ba? Am, I correct? am i correct asa was actually written by rj and salada so mm-hmm. hi rj you're watching <laughs> um, yeah it's a bisaya song can you tell us the story behind this song Yeah. All right. So Asa is actually in Visaya. Most of us know it means where, no? So in the song, I'm asking the person I like, like, what can I do so you will like me back? What is it that I can do just so you have the same feelings for me? 
So the whole theme about the song is about unrequited love. And I think in a way it's about sort of desperate, no? Asking someone to like you back, which I feel is very relatable for all ages, diba? Right? I'm sure Zairish can, can agree. Yeah. Everyone has experienced liking someone that apparently doesn't like you back. What has been the best comment or feedback you received when you released ASA? Hmm. Uh, I never... I actually... Um, I was really overwhelmed to receive a lot of comments from people who don't speak Visaya. So I have a couple of... Uh, there were a couple of people who messaged me from the States, Americans. We have um, a couple of people from Luzon and they don't speak Visaya at all. They, do, they didn't actually understand the lyrics, but somehow they were able to get that sad Maui feeling and they enjoyed the song, which for me is also the purpose of music. Now, sometimes if you can't touch the person directly with the lyrics, the general vibe of the song and how you perform mm-hmm. it should shine through so that the emotion shines through. And so I, I was really... Um, I was really overwhelmed to get that sort of response from people. So thank you. Much more maybe when you explain to them what the lyrics yeah. is all about, right? Yeah, yeah. Zairish naman, the, the uh, single you released last April is titled, Wa Ku Gada Home. What's the story yeah. naman with this song? Uh, for this song, it's more, it, it tra- if we translate it, it's more of like, I didn't expect. <laughs> I didn't expect. Um, it's more of like I, I I wrote this song last 2018, and the the background of this is like, um, it was my cousin who who asked me to write a song, and then uh, asked me if I can help him because um my project still as a school, and then um that time I was like, I'm not in the moment, but I asked him nah what what kind of um story you want me to to write and he said to me that anything lang so that time my cousin has i used that um I, I took advantage on that like his love life uh because i saw him being heartbroken when he had his uh, first love and i was there with him and i was there comforting him um and then eventually parang move on na siya, and then he did not expect that someone will, would love him again and then that's when i got the idea or the concept na nung una nasa siya, and he did not expect na someone will love him again and then now he didn't expect na may magmamahal sa kanya ulit so it's more of like that it's more of like um a love life na hindi mo expect <laughs> Good for him. Good for him. <laughs> now, this year, no, Himig Handog had had its first Bisaya entry, a uh, song by Janine Berdin. And also we had an interview with Alaska's Alcacid said that she's a huge fan of Bisaya songwriters. Even if, um, well, she can't understand a bit of Bisaya. That's why she's, she's a huge fan of our songs. Now, do you think the Manila industry is now more open to encouraging Cebuano artists like yourself to write non tagalog songs, whereas before they were discouraged to do so because it was not so marketable? What do you think? Hmm. I think, yeah. I think because now the, the, everything is like something like parang in imitate in a way. And there's no new, like there's no more new. Um, um, way of um, creating a story and I think um, it's really now open I, I think the Manila side is now open to or even now here sa Cebu is now open sa um, Bisaya songs because it's more like it's ours eh. it's ours and there's something um, beauty about it and now it's more of like um, it's now in this level of acceptance, something like that. So that's my. Um, How about you, Justine? No, I definitely, I definitely agree that this pop has taken over the world, and I'm really glad to know that uh, more and more people, as I um, more more people outside of Cebu definitely appreciate um Cebuano culture through our music. I think the Bisaya language is something beautiful and in a way it reflects our identity as Cebu. It's just great that a lot of people appreciate it. Um, maybe, yes, you can compare in the past. There have been some biases, you know, towards the Bisaya language. Um, 
because you know the greater market speak Filipino and uh, maybe in that way they wouldn't be able to relate to it. But I'm glad that um, Viva, for example, artists uh, the avenue to share their music and to share the beautiful Visaya language. Now there are so many artists breaking barriers like uh, Karen Sita doing rap music, for example. Um, yeah, I'm just glad that Cebuano music is now appreciated and it should be appreciated. Um, after all, we're one country and um, it's nice to share our culture with each other. Yeah. Teens and Tawag Tang Panghalan, right? What have you learned from those experiences and any plans of joining another competition? Especially how the Cebuana singers seem to be on a winning streak lately. Right. Um, last 2016, I joined the Voice Teens. Uh, unfortunately, I didn't get in. No judge turned for me. And after that, I released my first single, Towards the Sun. Um, and then in 2019, I joined Tawag Tang Panghalan sa Showtime. And both were really such great experiences. Uh, for me, I learned that um, in those sort of competitions, really the only competition that you should be thinking about is yourself because um, every artist is different from each other. People have different voices, different genres, and different things to bring to the table. And the only thing that you should worry about really is um, giving your performance. And in both competitions, I really just enjoyed myself. I had such a great time. Of course, no, winning, <laughs> winning is something that you should consider, but... More than that, I was just really excited to sing and be on TV. Um, in terms of joining future competitions, as of now with the COVID um, situation, I haven't really thought about any competitions. I'm For now, I'm busy making YouTube content. So I'm with Oomph TV as well under Viva. And so I've been making covers, which is something that I never really did before the pandemic. And I just released my song under Viva. And it's so far, it's going great. All right. After releasing Asa and what? Of the home, what will what can your followers look forward to next? Zairish? Oh, for me, um, I would just like to thank to, to take this opportunity to thank everyone who supported my song and um to look forward to um I'm just I'm so so hoping that hopefully you know soon have a music video on that and um and yeah I I would, I would just like to invite everyone also to um Listen to Wako Gada Home. If you haven't yet, um, you can um, stream it on all the music stores, it, on Spotify, iTunes, and YouTube. And you can also follow me on my social media accounts at Zyre. So thank you for uh, having me too. All right, before I go to Justine, um, Zyre, can you sing, sing, sing us a few lines of Wako Gada oh. Home? <laughs> all right, I'm, I'm just going to sing the chorus. Um, okay. Ayaw ka ba lang ka? Hinom dumi kini Hinom dumi kini Bisagun sa upa Pagtuyok sa kaliputan Tawaga lang akong pangalan Ako ang Tanan. Not. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Ikaw naman, Justin. Um, what can your followers look forward to next? And then, kantahin me a few lines from Asa. All right. So, first of all, I would like I would like to thank um, all the people who've supported me so far under Viva Records. If you haven't listened to it yet, um, please feel free to give it a listen. It's out now on all digital music platforms. Asa by Justine Arvias. In terms of my music and more content, you can check up more updates um, on my social media accounts. So on Instagram, Facebook, Twitter, also on YouTube, I am at Justine Arias. So on my YouTube channel, I do covers, I do a bunch of vlogs, and I hope you guys will look forward to some future music. Hopefully, I'll have more projects with Viva um, in releasing songs. But if you're not into listening to my music yet, then perhaps you'd like to check out my, <laughs> my YouTube content as well. Um, and for the song, Asa, asa man kapita ba ang gusto ni mong makita para ikaw may kuba isagwa ko yung ay isagwa ko yung ay asa asa man kapita ba 
Ang gusto mo buhaton ko Para maganaan ka na ko Bisag na sayot ko Na di ako emote po That's all Alright, thank you so much once again Justine, Narvios, and Zayush Alcasig Thank you for joining us today For the some stories, trends, and events Join us here next time on the Freeman Conversation